first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello everyone, this is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. As always, we appreciate you joining us. We are live streaming here from the Fox 12 Oregon Newsroom, as we do every weekday, starting around 1 p.m. and going throughout the afternoon with a wide range of topics that we cover, including talking about our resident volcanoes. Uh, Mount Adams has uh, recently had some earthquakes that have been noticed, that have been monitored, and uh, according to reports, this is the most amount of earthquakes within one month of time since 1982, when monitoring really began. But we're joining, uh, joined right now by John J. Major from the Cascades Volcano Observatory, the scientist in charge. And John, always appreciate having you on here to talk about this. And when it comes to these earthquakes on Mount Adams, I guess, can you give everybody a, maybe a bit of an explainer and, and an understanding of how often it is that those do occur there? Yeah, so earthquakes at Mount Adams, at least locatable earthquakes, are you know, relatively rare. Um, typically, we might get one locatable earthquake larger than, say, magnitude one, uh, maybe every couple of years. Um, so they're not all that frequent. Um, and in September, we had about six earthquakes uh, between magnitude just under one, 0 0.9, up to a magnitude two. Um, they are all located around, you know, kind of at the volcano. So to get six in one month is a little bit unusual compared to its past history. Uh, but, but our real challenge right now is that there's only one seismometer within about six and a half miles, seven miles of the volcano. And with one seismometer, it's really hard to do very good locations. It's really difficult to get uh, accurate depth of the earthquakes, things like that. And if there are earthquakes smaller than about magnitude one, that seismometer, that seismic station, they, it can see them, but it can't locate them. So, uh, like I said, uh, so in September, we've had six that were locatable. Um, and so just to get a better sense of what's going on, we are in the process now of, of adding a few temporary stations at Mount Adams just to, uh, to be able to get a better assessment of where these earthquakes are occurring, how deep they are, um, their size, things like that. So it's, it's, we're using this as an opportunity to learn more about Mount Adams. You know, Mount Adams is, is one of the volcanoes in the Cascades. It's really not very well monitored. You know, like I said, only one, one seismometer within about seven miles. So we're viewing this really as an opportunity to just learn more about Mount Adams itself. And uh, as you mentioned there, so one of the least probably observed compared to Mount St. Helens or Mount Hood or something like that, um, or monitored rather. Uh, so. What is the reasoning behind that? Is why why was Mount Adams or is Mount Adams uh, less monitored than the other volcanoes? Yeah, so several years ago, um, the USGS did what they called a um, a threat assessment uh, analysis of of all the volcanoes in the United States, and there's something like 170 odd volcanoes that United States and its territories. And so of the volcanoes here in the Cascades, uh, different volcanoes, the, 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 the threat potential ranking goes from very high threat potential, something like Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, to very low threat potential. Now, Mount Adams was classified as a high threat potential volcano, but not a very high threat po uh, potential volcano. And so over the past many years, we've been focusing a lot of our monitoring efforts, uh, building out our networks on the volcanoes that are classified as very high threat potential volcano. So Mount Adams is certainly on our list to, to beef up our monitoring network out there. And in fact, we we have plans to uh, try to install some new permanent stations out there. And we're, we're working through the whole permitting process on that. But um, because Mount Adams uh, was ranked as high threat versus very high threat, we were putting our focus right now on the very high threat ones. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, Adams is, has been on our radar and we do have plans to, to beef up that network. And since it is a uh, high threat, you know, you're seeing these, these six earthquakes within, within the month time there, uh, time frame, and that being a little bit out of the ordinary, you know, is that something that causes concern for you or is it just merely just an interesting thing and we'll see what happens? Yeah, at this point, it's, it's just interesting. Um, um, at, the, at the current time, there's no cause for concern. We're keeping our, what we call our alert level status at, at normal and the aviation color code at green. Uh, which is the same as every other volcano in the Cascades right now. Um, you know, there's a good chance that this is uh, background activity at the volcano, but with one seismometer, it, it's hard to tell exactly. So, um, like I said, we, we're using this as an opportunity to to learn more about the volcano. That's why we want to put some more instrumentation out there right now. Um, and once once we get some more um, 
information on what these earthquakes are doing, we'll be able to better assess the significance of that activity. And then uh, we'll be able to act upon that if any additional action is warranted on our part right now. And how long will that take to install those uh, temporary seismometers? Actually, we installed one this morning and we have plans to install a couple more next week. Okay, so it's a, a quick process then uh, comparatively to, uh, to get those out there and then you can start gathering that data. Um, something else that I'm sure somebody will be asking here in the, in the comments to this is, do you think this has any correlation to some of the earthquakes that are happening on Mount St. Helens or elsewhere really in the Cascades in general? Or was this pretty much just isolated at Mount Adams? Yeah, this is just isolated at Mount Adams right now. I mean, right now, the, the locatable earthquakes appear to be located at the volcano itself. Um, we know that there are some smaller earthquakes going on, but they're too small for us to locate with just one seismometer. So we don't know if those are actually at the volcano or maybe off the volcano somewhere. Um, so again, by putting out these temporary stations, and, and what we're doing is uh, we have a cache of equipment. We call them quick quick rapid deploy stations. Uh, that's what we're sticking out. It's technology we've developed over the past several years. So these are the kinds of stations that, um, let's say if one of our other volcanoes that has a number of permanent stations out there, um, if we needed to augment a network at one of the other volcanoes, these are the kinds of stations we could put out. And so we're using this, uh, you know, this is also a good test for our, our ability to, to do these rapid deployments. Um, so like I said, um, so we, we, we got permission from the Forest Service to do this, and we got one station out this morning and a couple more will go out next week. What would be a level where it would become concerning for you or where it could potentially change, change the, the level, I guess, of monitoring? even higher for something with non atoms. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, we, we definitely want to see kind of what we'll call it multi-parameter type information. So in addition to earthquakes, um, we'd want to see something going on with the uh, changes in the ground surface, you know, some kind of deformation around the volcano, and, and that's often monitored with GPS. Now, we don't have any GPS stations out on Mount Adams, but we can monitor ground deformation uh, through satellite technologies. And the most recent uh, satellite images that we've acquired um, that were current as of uh, a few days ago show there is no ground deformation associated right now with this uh, with this earthquake activity. So there's no indication right now anything unusual other than the earthquakes. And you know, with the earthquakes, we'd probably want to see these things getting more frequent. We probably want to see them getting larger. I mean, as magma works its way to the, if, if magma is working its way to the surface, it's got to break a pathway. When it breaks a pathway, it breaks rock. So we'd, we'd start to see larger earthquakes. We'd see more frequent earthquakes. We'd probably see the earthquakes changing with depth, uh, getting shallower as, they, as, as if magma was actually moving up toward the surface. Um, so, you know, we'd look for that kind of signal in the earthquakes. We'd look for ground deformation. And if we started to see that, um, we would also probably try to do some gas monitoring and see if the, any gases are being emitting that might indicate that magma is uh, working its way up toward the surface. But as of now, we are nowhere near uh, that, that level of concern. No, not at all. There, there's no particular concern right now. Like I said, you know, we just want to get some more information, uh, get a better sense of where these earthquakes are, where they're located, uh, how, you know, what their depth is, things like that. And then we'll be able to assess more what the cause of these earthquakes are and then um, we'll take it from there um, and see if any further action is warranted. And uh, while doing this extra monitoring, uh, you know, and gathering all of this data, where and how would people be able to follow along with that to just, uh, you know, keep up up to date with what it is that you're finding out there? Yeah, so once once we're pretty confident uh, that our data transmissions are consistent and, and, and constant, uh, we'll be posting uh, the, the seismic data to our website um, on our Mount Adams webpage, just like all our other data is posted. Nice. Well, John, anything else that you think people should know just about the earthquakes there at Mount Adams or Mount Adams in general? Yeah, maybe not so much of the earthquakes, but I do know we've had a few questions. You know, last week there were there, was re there were reports of some kind of a weird odor in the Vancouver area. Yes. And, you know, one of the usual suspects was Mount St. Helens. Um, I'm sure that people are going to now, I, I've heard reports again today that there were uh, people have reported some, some strange odors down in the Vancouver area. Um, my guess is that we may start seeing some queries about, no, is Mount Adams the usual sus is, is Mount Adams the suspect of this one? And, you know, I, I think we can pretty confident, confidently rule out Mount Adams. First of all, unlike the other volcanoes like Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, uh, say Mount Baker, Mount Adams does not have uh, focused fumaroles um, located uh, up near the summit, there's some very diffuse gassing. It's it's not concentrated in, in any particular fumarole. Um, if Mount Adams was emitting, uh, well, any volcano, if it emits gas, as that gas gets carried downwind, it's going to dilute 
Um, so to get anything that's really concentrated down here so far away from the volcano, you'd have to really be emitting quite a bit of gas at the volcano. Um, and there's no indication of that right now. And then uh, gases are going to be emitted as magma gets closer to the surface. So either magma has to be working its way up pretty close to the surface or has to have a pretty, pretty good connection from the magma body up to the surface. And as I mentioned earlier, if magma is actually going to be pushing its way up into the body of the volcano, it's going to break rock. It's going to cause a lot of earthquakes. So magma movement is going to be seismogenic. And so there's, there's no indication of that right now. And so I think we can pretty confidently rule Mount Adams out as the source of uh, whatever this odor is that people seem to be smelling. Yeah, so Mount Adams and Mount St. Helens ruled out for that. Yeah, and in fact, uh, we, che we checked our, we have a gas sensing station up in the crater of Mount St. Helens. Uh, we looked at that again this morning. Um, there's really not much coming out and the winds are actually in the wrong direction. The, the winds are actually blowing out of the Southeast up at Mount St. Helens. So if Mount St. Helens was emitting any gas uh, sufficient to, to, to be able to cause an odor that could be smelled you know, far away, um, it, it's actually blow, the winds are actually blowing up toward Olympia. So they're, they're not even blowing in the right direction. So we feel pretty confident we can rule out the volcanoes. All right, well, um, good information all around as always. You know, John, I always appreciate you being on here to, to talk about this and just give everybody the facts of as you were doing it. I'm looking forward to seeing what the uh, you know, what the data shows there around Mount Adams and, uh, and seeing that when you release that out. But otherwise, thank you very much for joining me. I always appreciate it. Absolutely. And I, I think, you know, your, your viewers and the public can be pretty confident that uh, we'll, we'll keep the public informed. I mean, if we see anything, yeah. we're not going to hide it. You know, we're, we're, we'll certainly push out information if, if anything's unusual or, or we need to provide any further updates. I appreciate it so much. Well, thanks, John. Sure thing. Take care, Greg. You too. And for everybody uh, joining us again, this is Fox 12 Now. We're live streaming here, so we cover a wide range of topics every day. You can check all of those out on the Fox 12 Oregon YouTube channel, kbtv.com, under the Fox 12 Now tab, or the Fox 12 Oregon app. And uh, if there's ever breaking news between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m., this is also the place to go where you found me right here. Thanks for joining in. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.